Hello, uh, as you know, this is uh, Shackleton. Um, finally appeared, he's all frisky. Not sure what, uh, what he's been into, catnip or something. I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm gonna talk about the oceans, this video. In about a week, I start teaching a course called Global Ocean Changes at the University of Ottawa. So if you live in Ottawa or close by and you wanna learn all about the ocean, it's basically uh, two three-hour lectures a week from four to seven on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. It starts on uh, May 2nd. I think there's about 16 or 18 people registered in the course so far. So if you're interested in taking the course, um, you live in the region, um, you can go on to the geography website for the University of Ottawa, Ottawa and uh, register for, for the course. Should be, uh, should be interesting, should be a lot of fun. So probably my videos in the next little while will be weighted towards uh, changes, massive changes that we're seeing in the, in the ocean. Okay, so what I'm talking about today is some recent papers that look at the wave height. So one paper, it looked at 4 billion data points. It looked at information on the surface winds just over the ocean surface and also the um, temperature of the ocean, also the wave height, significant wave height. So mostly the extremes in, in wave height. And what it found was that the winds over the surface of the ocean have increased um, about 8% um, in the last uh, three or four decades. And the significant wave heights have increased about 5%. Another paper, I've often talked about the amount of heat going into the ocean. So this heat is actually um, strongly correlated to more energetic uh, ocean surfaces. So I'll be discussing another paper that talks about the increase in global wave power, they call it. So the actual power or energy per unit time that is dissipated in the ocean. So of course this has huge impacts on um, <clears throat> coastline erosion, you know, combined with uh, global sea level rise on infrastructure along coastlines and things like that. So let me get right into the details of this, uh, of this paper, of these papers. Okay, so this is uh, my Twitter feed at Paul H. Beckwith. So basically, this is a 33-year study showing increasing ocean winds and wave heights. Um, and uh, there's an interesting effect of the oceans, uh, cyclones and things over the oceans, causing these openings in the sea ice, these poly polinas in Antarctica, and I'll talk about that. And here we are, ocean waves and winds are getting higher and stronger. So I've tweeted out a number of stories that have been in the um, recent uh, news about this topic. Of course, uh, there's also lots of this on my Facebook page, Paul Beckwith, okay? Um, and this is my blog, of course. Uh, please considering uh, donating to my PayPal account in order to support my work where I join the dots on abrupt climate change. Do the research and create these uh, educational videos to keep you up to date on the latest in climate science. So let's get right to this study. This 33 year study shows increasing ocean winds and wave heights. Okay, so this is the, these are global trends in the extreme, the 90th percentile wind speed over the period 1985 to 2018. So if you take all of the times where there's winds over the ocean and you take only the top 10% the strongest winds, and you look at how those are changing over this period, um, then you can see that the the uh, this is in units centimeters per second per year, and the red areas the, the redder areas are changing more. Okay, uh, they're increasing, so you can see that the Southern Ocean there is a big change in the Southern Ocean. Um, wind speeds are increasing mostly here. So this is not surprising given that the southern annular mode, the SAM, is increasing in strength. 
There's also some increases, not so many, in, not so much increase in the tropics near the equator. And then when you go to the far north, you also get some increases in those ocean basins, but not as much as in the southern ocean basins. Um, so this seems to make sense, uh, and you can relate this to the, they don't do it in the paper, but I think that this can be directly related to the Arctic temperature amplification. Because the Arctic is warming so much faster than the rest of the planet, there's less need for heat to go from the equator north. So more heat is going to the south and it creates these higher winds in the southern hemisphere and therefore higher uh, ocean height. So this is, these are the winds, these are the trends. So extreme winds in the southern ocean have increased by 1.5 meters per second or 8%. Okay, so this is an increase from, you know, roughly 20 meters per second, you know, an increase of, uh, 8% of 20 meters per second would be about 1.6 meters per second. So that's the sort of numbers that we're talking about here, and that's over the past 30 years, three decades. Extreme waves have increased by 30 centimeters or 5%. So these extreme waves are about six meters. 5% of six meters is about 30 centimeters. That's the increase over the same period. Okay, it might not seem like much, but it does have huge impacts on our climate, especially, you know, when there's storm surge and the breaking waves associated on top of those storm surges uh, can, can uh, really have a detrimental effect on coastlines. Okay, so this plot was the, this was the wind speeds over the surface, and now this is the wave heights. This is the extreme so the 90th percentile wave height. So the top 10%, the, the, the um, largest 10% of the waves, how they've changed over the period 85, 1985 to 2018. Okay, so what we're seeing here, and this is centimeters per year increase. So what we can see is the largest increase by far is in the southern oceans and the wave heights. There's also increases in the northern oceans Okay, and not so much change in the um, middle, in, in near the equator. In fact, some decrease in wave heights in this region here. Okay, so this has a, this was just published in Science, and uh, this is the actual uh, link to the article. I'm doing this video from home, and I'm not able to see the full text. I have to go to the university to get this. Um, but they looked at uh, a huge database, 31 satellite missions. They looked at the ocean buoys, many, many ocean buoys, and it was over a long period of time. And uh, so they got very, you know, they looked at billions of data points and got all kinds of, you know, and came up with these conclusions. Now, there's another paper that came out fairly recently about how the upper ocean warming is changing the global wave climate, making waves stronger. Okay, so this article came out um, <clears throat> in January of 2019, and it talks about the trends in ocean temperature warming and also the trends in something they call wave power, which is power is energy per unit time. Okay, so wave power has increased globally by 0.4% since 1948. This increase is correlated with the increasing sea surface temperatures, both globally and by different <coughs> ocean regions. Okay, of course, the, um, the atmosphere-ocean interactions are extremely important <coughs> for global climate and for climate change. So measurements on the global wave power can be a valuable indicator of global warming similar to CO2 concentration, global sea level rise, or global surface atmospheric temperature. Okay, um, so 2017 was the warmest year on record for the global ocean, although this article was published in uh, January 19, 2018. Okay, so, um, and I think, uh, you know, the 2019 data is showing the same sort of thing, that 2018 was the warmest year on record. Uh, but you can see the general outline here, the anomaly of energy going into the oceans and how there's a very sharp rise here 
that is continuing, and this is where the ocean heat is going. Lots of ocean heat building up here. This would be expected if the Gulf Stream is slowing down and not coming up across to this region here. Lots of increase in the heat content in the poles. Um, and uh, there is some variation here. There's some areas that where, where the anomaly is actually negative here, but for the most part, you know, it's a red world, basically. Um, and uh, we know that about, well, more than 90%, about 93% of the Earth's heat related to global warming is going into the oceans. Okay, um, so this ties in with the increase of global wave power. Okay, so let's look at the, um, the let's look at this paper in detail. But before I do that, <coughs> there was a, I wanted to show you that there was a, let me, uh, Close this. Uh, I don't know why that's coming up. Okay, there's a 43-year-old mystery of this poly, polina in Antarctica. So the polina is an opening in the ice. It's a mid-ocean, mid-sea polina in this case, a body of unfrozen ocean that appeared within a thick body of ice during Antarctic's winter almost two years ago. So this thing appeared almost two years ago, okay, and then it comes back seasonally. Um, but before then, we had this type of thing appearing, this type of opening in the ocean appearing about 43, 43 years ago, okay? And it couldn't be explained, um, but this paper has been studying it, and uh, basically this mystery has been solved. So it, again, it's related to the, it's not, it's not a, a melting effect, what it is, is it's a dynamic effect of the movement of the ice. So what's happening is the southern annular mode, the winds circumventing Antarctica, are increasing in strength. Okay, um, now because of the Coriolis force deflecting things to the left, you know, as these winds come circumvent and the deflection due to the rotation of the Earth is to the left, it's pulling the ice away from the continent a bit, and that can open up these polinas in the ice. Okay, so this study basically um, showed that um, they used satellite observation and reanalysis. They found that cyclones as intense as category 11 on the Beaufort scale and the strong winds that they carry over the ice pack caused the ice to shift in opposite directions. So it basically pulled the ice apart and left a gaping hole of polina in the middle of the ocean. Okay, when this thing was discovered, it was 9,500 square kilometers large. It grew by seven, almost seven and a half times to 800,000 square kilometers within a month. And then eventually, as the ice was retreating during the Southern Hemisphere summer, it eventually merged with the open ocean and disappeared. Now, before 2017, it, it occurred in the, it was, has been known to occur in the 70s when satellite observation started, and it baffled scientists ever since. Um, you know, and basically it's very important because where, there, where it opens up, there's a lot of energy that can be transferred. The ice is a good insulator, so when the air is very, very cold, um, the, the cold air is, like, it, it's, separated from the water temperature below. The, the, the sea ice there acts as an insulator. But when you get these polinas, these open areas, then you can get huge amounts of heat lost from the ocean in those regions. So you get these ecosystems associated with these, these um, open areas of water. So basically, and I, if you go to the um, actual article, once again, it's behind a paywall and uh, but the, basically the result is it, it wasn't direct ice melt or thermodynamic effects that were leading to this. It was dynamical forcing of the winds on the sea ice. Okay, the meridional transport of heat towards Antarctica. So basically we're talking about ridges and troughs in the jet stream where they, where they uh, cross over. There's very strong winds that can pull the ice in different directions and can open up these polinas. Okay, so I'm going to, in the next video, I'm going to talk all about this paper and the uh, results um, 
the global wave power information. Thanks for listening.